take a moment of your time to talk to you about the International Noodle Vase Society. Welcome to Thriftmas, day six. A few days ago, I uploaded a video where I visited 18 thrift stores in one day. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you everything that I bought on that trip. But before I get into it, I do need to give you guys a quick disclaimer because some of my international viewers have been leaving comments like this. Now, I just want to let you guys know, for those of you that don't know, I live in New South Wales in Australia and in our state, we've only had one case in the last 28 days. So for the first time since March, I've been heading out and about, going outside of my own local area. Up until now, I've literally only been leaving the house for groceries and that's it. So I know there's a lot of people that don't realize that Australia is in this situation right now. They think that we have it just as bad as like other countries, but at the moment it's safe enough for us to head out. Uh, I always wear my mask everywhere. Every time I go in and out of these thrift stores, I sanitize my hands. I haven't been to a single thrift store that didn't have hand sanitizer at the entrance and I use it everywhere I go. I have it in my car as well. So for those of you that are concerned or for anyone that thinks it's irresponsible to be shopping at the moment, I just wanted to give you uh, an idea of where we are at in Australia and particularly the state that I live in right now. At the time that I filmed that video, when I visited those 18 stores, we were on a, I think 20, something day streak of not a single case and we only had that one case I think it was yesterday that that first case in about a month popped up so anyway just wanted to let you guys know that before I get any more comments from people thinking that I'm being irresponsible so with that let's have a look at everything I bought when I visited 18 thrift stores in a day I actually can't remember everything that I bought so this is a surprise unboxing for myself as well as you guys all right <laughs> Of course, the first thing I picked up was one of my Horcruxes. So it's been brought to my attention that this plate is the brand Anko, which is apparently a very cheap brand that they sell in Kmart. And apparently this plate in Kmart brand new would have been $3. Doesn't bother me in the slightest though, because regardless of where it's made, I will hide a piece of my soul within it. Now I'm going to put all the things back here once I unbox them. And uh, I had forgotten to show you these, so I may as well show you these now. So I did buy this huge, huge bowl. This is beautiful. I love this type of glass. Now on the bottom of this, it says Albi glass, recycled and made in Spain. I'm going to have to Google Albi glass. I know nothing about the brand. I did pay $30 for this bowl. That's okay, I don't mind because it's beautiful and unique. What I love about it is this beautiful swirly pattern. It looks like smoke. It's so unique, so stunning. I'm gonna have to research this whole recycled thing because I, I bet there's a very interesting story behind this brand, Albi Glass. Yes, it was $30, but it's glorious. This was $10. This is yet another vase with this beautiful frilly rim on it. I wasn't that overjoyed by the fact that it's black on the rim because it doesn't suit, you know, the decor, as you can see behind me mostly pastel colors. The black doesn't necessarily suit, but I can always offset that by putting flowers in this that are beautiful pastel flowers. All right, next. People freaked out about this. This was $5 from the Vinnie's in Hornsby, and it's a glass mushroom that actually has dried flowers inside. I'm not sure if the butterfly is real. I'm guessing it is because the flowers are all real. So if you didn't see this on day, I think it was day three that I posted this video. If you didn't see it, let me read out what it says on the bottom. It says, these are real flowers which have been preserved to last forever. Their brilliant natural colors do not fade if kept away from strong light. Do not remove the original airtight seal. It says, Michael R. Curzon made in England. I've got no idea how old this is. I'm going to have to do some research, but I reckon just by looking at it, I'm gonna guess this is maybe from the 90s, I'm gonna say. Feel free to do your own research. The name that you would be looking for is Michael R. Curzon, who may be the artist, I'm not sure. And then it also says Indoor Gardening LTD, Banstead, Surrey. This has to be one of the most interesting things I've ever found secondhand. It's amazing to me to think that this has come all the way from England. These flowers? I guess these are English flowers? This is an English butterfly. Jolly good, sir. This was $5. A most spectacular find. Ah, speaking of spectacular finds. This little guy was $3. Now, you might remember that I got this because in a different store, I had actually seen something that had this exact same floral design on it. This has Made in Japan written on the bottom of it. It's hand painted. 
It's stunning. I love that it's a purple and pink flower. It's just so beautiful. I have no idea how old this is. I also can't read the kanji on the bottom. A lot of people that watch my videos can read Japanese. Is this the kanji for bright? I think it is. I'm not sure what the bottom kanji is, but if you can translate that for me, we might be able to Google it and see where this is from or who made it or how old it is or something, but I now have a beautiful miniature pastel Japanese vase and I couldn't be happier. Ah, okay. I forgot I bought this. I am assuming this is supposed to be a vase. Either that or it's the most unusual coffee cup I've ever seen. To be fair though, cafes in Melbourne would most certainly serve their lattes out of something like this. If they serve them out of avocados and capsicums, what's stopping them from serving lattes out of funny looking glass vases? What's interesting about this is it has this sort of teardrop thing in the center. The thing written on the bottom of it is inverted. So for me to read it, I actually have to look on the inside. So it says, innermost.co.uk. It says, designed by Steve Jones and Yi Ling Wan. Take from that what you will. I will have to Google this one again. I want to put some sort of plant in it. <gasps> Let's see if this works. This is what I currently have my lucky bamboo in. Will it fit with its roots? <gasps> no. <sighs> All right, well, I'm not gonna go cutting shoots off any of my plants just for the sake of this video. So I'm gonna have to find something to put in this, something that's very, very thin that can go all the way down and its roots can sit in the bottom. Obviously nothing that's gonna grow too big because the roots could possibly burst through the glass. So leave your suggestions down below for what you think I should put in this or whether I should drink espresso out of it. This feels like Christmas, seriously. This is so much fun. This is so exciting. I feel like I'm unboxing Christmas presents, oh my God. So. Oh, this geometric blue vase was $1 on the bottom that it says that it's from Target. It's got an interesting rubbery matte texture. It doesn't have any holes in the bottom though, so maybe it's not really meant to be a vase. Maybe it's meant to be a stationary holder or something. Oh no, hang on, it says faceted tumbler. A tumbler. For drinking? Well, look, if it enters this household, it is officially for plant. <laughs> oh! I have an idea. I'm gonna see something haunting and slightly horrifying, but also very, very cool. This is a mango seed. I've been propagating this mango seed in water for a couple of weeks and it's given me some beautiful leaves. It's been sitting in this jar, but it now has a new home. <laughs> It's really, really dirty. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see, but it's got all these black scuff marks all over it. So I need to try and clean this up a bit. Uh, there is a huge temptation to paint it, but also I do really like the color that it is now. But there we go, new home for my little mango seed. <gasps> Look at this piece of glass. How incredible is this? So I think that this at some point may have been a big square sheet of glass that they have pinched together and given these ripply effects. This was $5. It doesn't have any information on the bottom. There's no stickers, there's no stamps, nothing. So I don't know anything about this or where it's from or who made it, but it's stunning. It's so sculptural and, ah, uh, okay. I feel like I should buy some expensive chocolates or something and put them in here or like some nice, really pretty rock candy or something. I don't want to put anything in it that could scratch it. Like I don't want to use it to chuck my keys in or anything like that. I must be gentle with the precious glass. Next. another Horcrux, my iridescent narwhal. Now, I did not know that this was a narwhal when I first picked it up. I was like, is it, is it to whale? Is it to slug? But on the bottom, it's got this sticker. Now, I know this logo as the Typo logo. Typo is like a stationery store. And it says, narwhal light, batteries included. I'm sorry, how? Where? How, how is this a light? It has a hole in the base of it that leads to nothing. It has this thing in the top of it, which leads nowhere. If you've ever owned this in its light form, please tell me how it can possibly be a light. Cause I thought that it might've been like a tea light holder. I could put a little tea light here and that might look like a little horn or I could make a little wax horn for him or something. If I put a candle there, like a very tall candle that it could burn, then he'll look a bit more like a narwhal because right now he looks like a, it's like a, a Pokemon or something. But he is iridescent, so he is another Horcrux. Oh, this is heavy. Ah, yes! All right, so this was $12.50. Now I found this in episode one. I spotted it at the 
Salvo's in Richmond and I didn't buy it, but then later down the track when I found that little mini pink one, I knew that this one was back in Richmond and I thought, okay, now that I've found two matching pieces, I have to get them. So I got the little one, then I went back for this one. This is the same brand. Look at this stunning set. How beautiful is that? I'm so happy that I found both of these. I wonder if the one person, you know, donated them to different locations, or I wonder if this was a popular design at some point. And now because this is an outdated style, lots of people are just getting rid of it and donating it, I'm not sure. But I personally feel like these pieces were made for me and I'm beyond happy. Oh, just, just look at it. Just look at that. I have this little bowl. Now I don't know if this is intended to be for plants or if it was supposed to be used for eating out of, maybe putting dip in, like hummus or something. The brand is David and Waddle, I think it is. I think this is a fairly generic piece. What I really like about this is the design. I really like that it's pastel pink and it's also got this half white and then it's got gold specks all over it. I want to recreate this design with some other DIY videos that I've got coming up, but I'm going to definitely put a succulent in this, for sure. Next. One dollar. There's no information on this anywhere, but I believe this is just a toothbrush holder. But obviously I'm going to be using this for plants. It even has a drainage hole in the bottom, so perfect repurpose for me. Not using it for toothbrushes, it obviously it was supposed to be a bathroom piece, but look at the colours! It's just stunning! Oh my god, I literally love it! I know it's such a simple basic thing, like it's just a pastel colored toothbrush holder, but it brings me so much joy. Speaking of brings me joy, my third Horcrux. This teeny tiny little iridescent vase. This was $3. Look, it's, it's absolutely tiny. It's the size of the palm of my hand. What is the purpose of this? Is it decorative? Like are you supposed to put a one flower in it or what? what? What are things like this created for? They are created for souls to be stored in. Very nice. Next, oh yes. This was $2 and it matches the set of three that I showed, I think it was on day one. They are currently upstairs, so I'm not gonna go running up and get them. I'll go put this upstairs with them, but this is just the slightly bigger version of those. I picked up three of these photo frames because I'm gonna be giving these out as Christmas presents to my friends. I'm gonna print off some pictures of my friends and I. They had orange and blue in the store, but I thought that the blue was the prettiest. I think it's beautiful. And also these are brand new. They all came wrapped in plastic. They had like 20 of them on the shelf. I think they were a dollar each. Ah, this is so cool. This was $4. This vase, on the bottom of it, it has hand engraved into it. TF is engraved on it just there, if you can see. I don't know how old this is. I don't know the history behind it. It's beautiful. I want to know who TF is. Who are you? Tatiana Francis. Oh no, hang on, it's a J. Joanne Francis. Next. This feels like a vase. Noodle vase! It's another noodle vase. So uh, you saw the four that I picked up in episode one. This is yet another. And I'll tell you something funny. I have now started the International Noodle Society. If you go into a thrift store in your country and you spot a noodle vase, please take a photo and tag me and tell me where you're from. These guys are everywhere and some people have been telling me they think that they may be from Ikea. Now the ones that are upstairs actually have, all of them have a sticker on it that says handmade in Italy. So I don't know if um, Ikea used to get things made in Italy. If so, they could very well be from Ikea. Or maybe, maybe there's like a, a glass place in Italy that makes noodle vases and then Ikea decided to copy it and make cheaper versions. Look, I don't know but these bring me so much joy. It's funny because when I bought those ones in episode one, my intention was to spray paint them. I'm so glad I didn't because the colored glass, it just makes me really, really happy. And I don't think that I had this color blue. I think I had green, some purple, maybe I had a big blue one, but now I have a smaller blue one. I'm just gonna keep my eyes peeled and every time I see one of these, I'm gonna get it. I am making a noodle army. International Noodle Lovers Unite. Ah yes, this beautiful little hand-painted vase was $2. Now on the bottom, Vinnie's have gone and put their sticker over the top of the uh, logo or whatever it is under there. Let me just peel this off. Hopefully I don't take any of the words with it. 
hand painted by M. Towler in 1990. How special is that? That makes me so happy. I was attracted to this one because this one is a similar shape. So I feel like sitting together, even though they are different designs, they look like they're part of the same set. This is just looking prettier and prettier every minute. So I bought this because I really liked the mottly texture on it and I thought that I could spray this matte pink and this texture would shine through. I could tape off these little handles and keep them gold and have the rest as matte pink. But yet again, and especially after the yellow vase fiasco, I'm having second thoughts about covering this. I think I should just keep it the way that it is. It's stunning. It's really, really heavy. There's no information on the bottom of it. It was $2. It doesn't have any stamp or anything on the bottom. I don't know what to make of this. I don't know where it's from, how old it is or anything, but it's beautiful and this is another one that I've definitely changed my mind on. I'm not going to change this at all. I'm going to keep it just the way it is. All right, now this. First and foremost, I would like to apologize to anyone that I may have offended when I said that I wasn't interested in purchasing things made in China because I thought that they were cheap. I did have some comments and some direct messages from people that said to me that they felt offended as Chinese people that I would insinuate that products out of China aren't worth anything. The product that sparked this was this phase. Now, the first time that I went into the Windsor Vinnie's. I ran straight up to this thinking, oh my god, have I just found like some sort of hand-blown Murano glass vintage water jug. And when I looked on the bottom of it, it has this little sticker down here that says made in China. This is a very modern made in China sticker. This is what you find on the bottom of, you know, if you go into Kmart or Target or something and you get a plate from there. It's the same looking sticker. I thought, oh, this might just be some sort of mass manufactured jug that probably cost 15 or $20 brand new and they're charging 30 for it. So I thought that that wasn't a good way to spend my money. I by no means meant to offend anyone that is born in China, any Chinese people. I'm so sorry that what I said came across that way. I really, really regret saying it now because it didn't occur to me until I received those messages that that could actually hurt someone of Chinese descent. And going forward, I will try to see things with a different mindset. I don't want to keep thinking that, oh, just because it's made in China must mean that it's cheap. I was wrong for saying what I said. I'm really sorry if I hurt your feelings or if I offended you. And going forward, I'll try to be more mindful about the words that I say and how they could be perceived by other people. So with that, if you know anything about this phase or jug, it has a little sticker on it on the side here. This says designed in Japan, made in China. That could possibly be a logo of a company up there. I'm not entirely sure. I would love to find out some more information about this and where it's from and the company that designed it. And I'm really happy that I went back for it. It did take me three trips to the one store to finally decide that I was going to buy it. And you can't deny it's an incredible piece of glass. So I'm really, really happy that I got it. This was the only thing that I bought in the uh, Hornsby Fusion Op Shop. This was $6. This is a beautiful glass vase. It's an interesting shape. It's a triangle. It comes up to a central point like an hourglass and then it flares back out again. This was on a shelf in the front doorway and when I walked in and I saw it, I was like, gotta have that one. Oh, this vase, I have the exact same one upstairs from episode one. This is another thing that I found a matching pair of on a completely different day at a completely different store. I found this bowl at the Lifeline in Pennant Hills and I found this on the same day as I found this, but in completely different stores. As you can see, they're very, very similar glass with this sort of swirly smoky pattern. The big one had that made in Spain thing on it and this one has no information anywhere. It doesn't have a brand, it's got no stamps or anything. I don't know where it's from. Don't know how old it is, but what I do know is it's beautiful. I love it. It matches this one, even though they're not the same color, they still match. So these are gonna look really nice sitting together on my kitchen island. Oh. This has to be one of my absolute favorite finds. Look, oh my God, it's beautiful. This was $5 and it says as found because it's got a little nick in it. So $5 as found obviously just means like it was damaged like this when you bought it and you can't go back and say, you sold me something broken and I didn't know or whatever. But this is that same beautiful swirly glass. Look at this texture on the bottom. This is literally incredible. I have a few pieces upstairs that this matches in perfectly with, like that perfume bottle and uh, the little purple bowl thing, whatever it was. Don't worry guys, I'm not going to paint this. No way in hell. This is incredible. I can't believe this was $5. Oh my God, okay, these. I've gotta be very careful. Careful, careful. These are 
glass flowers. These were $10 each, which, yeah, I don't know. Is that too much? I don't think so. These have this beautiful blue and pink swirl on them. I'm fairly certain these are handmade somewhere, maybe quite some time ago too, because I haven't seen glass flowers in any stores in my lifetime at least. They have this really, really long stem on them. Now what I've got to figure out is what am I going to do with them? Like, should I put them in a vase? Should I find a big solid vase to put these in? Or should I just have them... D are they supposed to just sit like that? Is that... does that look right to you? I did find these at the same store and I can't help but wonder if the same person donated both of them because they look very, very similar. They're both what I think could be Italian hand-blown glass. I think the theme is way too similar for these to have come from two different people. So if they did come from the same person, they are reunited and they will stay together forever. <laughs> I picked up this plate. Now this was $6. This is yet again that same swirly, smoky glass. Can you believe I found all three of these on the same day? I couldn't be happier. These look, okay, yes, it's a black plate. It doesn't match the pastel theme. That doesn't matter because the glass aesthetic with the swirls overrides the desire for pastel colors for me. <laughs> this mirror, it's so ugly that it's cool. This was four dollars. This is actually foam. This whole thing is just squishy foam. On the back of it, it says Barnes League. It says IKEA 1999. <laughs> Some kid from the 90s totally had this in their bedroom. It almost, this kind of reminds me of Nickelodeon. This was too cool to pass up. Part of me wanted to decorate it my way and turn it pink, but the other part of me is like, no, it's, it looks like a giant booger and you should appreciate that aesthetic because it's from the 90s and that's when you grew up. This guy standing in front of me picked this up and looked it up and down and then put it back on the shelf and I was so relieved because I had spotted it at the same time he did and he just got to it first and I was like no 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 you don't need that sir you don't need that you really don't need that and of course he didn't need it but I did. It's a rose gold mirrored tray. A lot of my plants and their pots have holes in the bottom of them and these shelves behind me, they're really prone to water damage. If I water the plants on the shelves and if any water gets on the shelf itself, it's sort of like bubbles and cracks. So I always need things to put my plants on while I'm watering them. And I think that I can sit some plants on this, it'll be lovely. I got this timber plant stand. This was $15 and I filled the whole thing up with my pepperonis. <laughs> so my dilemma with this piece was I wasn't sure if I should keep it as timber, like the natural timber that it is, or if I should paint it. It's tempting to paint it, but also it's such a lovely piece of timber as it is that I probably don't need to do anything to it. Each one of these little things, they move, they swivel around. I've just positioned them like this so that, you know, none of the plants are sort of touching each other. I'm not sure if this was actually supposed to be a plant stand because it's got this, which is cork. I can't water them on here because if the cork gets wet, it'll destroy it. I really wanted a plant stand when I headed out that day and I'm so glad that I found this one. Now, anyone that watched episode so three already knows about this mushroom lamp because I was far too excited to not show it to you guys. I found this one on day one and then couldn't believe my lucky stars when I found this matching one on uh, day three. So obviously we have a, a Dan lamp and an Alex lamp and these live in our bedroom now. Uh, I'm meant to put one on one bedside table and the other on the other bedside table but they just look so cute sitting together that I'm just gonna leave them like this for a little while. <laughs> and last but not least, the giant foam board. Now I have two of these. This is from Kmart. Uh, the first one is pictures from Dan and my engagement party. The second one is uh, Polaroid pictures from our wedding. So this one, not sure what I'm gonna use it for yet. Maybe pictures of um, just Dan and I and Archie or something or family photos. I was so happy when I spotted this. All right, so now that we've looked at everything I bought from 18 different thrift stores, I'm gonna go upstairs and grab some of those matching items and reunite them with their long lost brethren while I go upstairs to go get the matching pieces. Please admire my shelf.
All right, guys, that's it. That's everything. I hope that you enjoyed Thriftmas Day 6. So with that, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow. Mwah.